Inventors are constantly finding out what's wrong with the world and saying, I want to go fix that. So that's a, um, an important quality and I guess I started out with that, I'm a disgruntled person. So uh, then beyond that, I just think that it requires um, the ability and the willingness to see, to see things as they really are and then kind of to imagine how they could be and then just do the hard work that's in between to make up the difference and then finally the hard work to follow through to bring it to reality because that's a lot of work in between. Generally healthcare professionals are intelligent and they're hard working or they would not have gotten to be healthcare professionals. So while those aren't absolute requirements, they're a lot better place to start from than the opposite. Now that having been said, um, all of us are in a position to perhaps invent consumer goods because we're all consumers. But to the extent that anyone has specialized knowledge, they're in a unique position to invent in that area. A successful invention should fulfill a need. Now, it's not an absolute rule because there are inventions that come first and then you create the need. But most successful inventions fill a need. And I was working in an area, spinal surgery, where there were many, many problems. So every day I was, um, let's say, confronted with opportunities to improve the situation, to fulfill a need. And in that regard, I was blessed. Oh. So could Edison Nation or Edison Medical help me invent? No. But what it could have done is those first two parts are the easy part. You see a problem you imagine, you come up with a solution. All of the skill set stuff after that is what doctors, for example, don't have. They go to medical school, they don't go to business school, they're not lawyers, they're not going to be able to know how to best protect their idea, how to be able to shop it, how to ensure that it gets commercialized on terms that are favorable to them or even will drive the commercialization. Well, certainly in the beginning, absolutely make uh, Take, take advantage of this resource. And if you really think, because doctors think they're the smartest guys in the world, I can do anything. That's why they're lousy businessmen, because they're not trained for that. You know, give me a break. You didn't go to law school, you didn't go to business school, you're not an MBA. But if you really think so, at least for the first one or two or three or 10, watch the process. And then I think what they'll really learn is they can't do it. I had my own full-time prototype shop. I was paying machinists who worked full-time for me. What other physician would do that? That's crazy. I had for my own patent attorney firm. I had two patent attorneys working for me full time. They just worked for me. No normal person would want to do that. For somebody just starting out, it'll be 20 years till they get all of the pieces in place. And to have the resources of someone like yourself or your organization that knows how to interact with these companies, how, to, how do you shop this to five different potential um, manufacturers and get the most favorable terms? How do you guarantee that once they have it and 8,000 other ideas that they won't shelve yours and say, oh, this one's better? So there's just so many pieces in play. What you're offering is a great resource.